In today's episode, a group of seven students encountered a mother grizzly and her cub during survival training in the wilderness with no adults and no way to defend themselves. The grizzly quickly charges at them one by one, severely mauling, biting, and ripping apart three of the boys. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is one of the most terrifying grizzly bear attacks in Alaskan history. Welcome to Final Affliction. Alaska is one of the untouched wonders of the world with miles of pristine glaciers and a truly amazing display of animal diversity. Due to this, Alaska holds more than half of America's national parks with an unlimited choice of terrain. One park in particular boasts the tallest peak in all of North America, Mount McKinley, aka Denali. Measuring over 20,000 feet, it is truly an impressive sight and attracts mountaineers from all over the world to Denali National Park and Preserve. Due to the protection that this area covers, the big five mammals are able to thrive here. Doll sheep, caribou, moose, wolves, and most infamously, the grizzly bear. From the beauty of the Aurora Borealis, to the mystery of 700 million year old fossils, there is something for everyone to enjoy and learn about. But as a group of teenagers would soon find out, some lessons leave permanent scars. In 2011, seven students from Staples High School in Connecticut were attending an outdoor education camp called the National Outdoor Leadership School, or NOLS for short. By this time, it was a well-established program that had been teaching students to develop their leadership and environmental awareness for the last 50 years. The boys were all of similar ages. Samuel Boas, Shane Garluck, and Noah Allaire were 16. Joshua Berg, Samuel Gottsegen, and Simeon Melman were 17. And the last boy, Victor Martin, was 18 years old. They were taking part in an extensive 30-day wilderness training expedition and had had the best three weeks of their lives so far. Together, they had learned and honed their survival skills over the last few weeks and they were now putting these skills to use as they embarked on a solo trip into the Alaskan wilderness. They confidently trekked into the bushes, walking mostly in a single file line as there was no actual path for the majority of the way and they had to follow each other to ensure that no one would get lost. They were prepared for any situation, having been trained for first aid and extreme wilderness survival. The final task that they have been set was a solo mission to reach a specific viewpoint without the help of any adults and using only the skills they had learnt in the last three weeks. They were excited to prove to everyone they had what it took to survive and headed off into the woods. That evening, they decided to cross a creek as Berg and Gottsegen led the group to their goal. The bushes were becoming very thick and difficult to push through without facing injury, in addition to the risk of them becoming separated. As they stepped towards the creek, the older boys noticed some rustling on the other side and decided to wait it out to see what it was as their training had taught them not to take any unnecessary risks. They felt their hearts stop as they saw what emerged from the bushes, a large brown bear and her cub. This was the worst case scenario for any wilderness expedition as the mother bear would be much more aggressive in order to defend her cub, killing anyone on sight. Unfortunately for them, they were immediately noticed. The mother charged at them, sprinting across the creek before the boys had a chance to react. Although even if they could react, they were unarmed. She reached Gottsegen first as he was heading the group and immediately knocked him to the ground. He tried to kick her away, but it was no use. Her size and ferocity outmatched him. She clamped her jaws onto his head and tried to crush his skull with her teeth. With blood running into his eyes and the force he felt being exerted onto his skull, he thought for sure that this is where he would die, in the mouth of a beast. Suddenly, she released his head. He thought she might run away, but he had no such luck. 
Instead, she latched onto his arms, biting and clawing at each one in turn, inflicting as much damage as possible. He screamed in pain as his muscles and skin were ripped from his body. Then, in hopes of finally killing the boy, she dragged her claws across his chest and punctured his lungs as he screamed out in agony. He could feel his ribs breaking under her weight and was blinded by the pain he felt. Next, she turned to the other leader, Joshua Berg. She swatted at him with her giant paws, the sharp claws ripping into his skin with each swipe. Her attack was short-lived, however, as she quickly turned her attention back to Gott Sagan, who was screaming for the other boys to set off the emergency beacon to call for help. While Noah Allaire attempted to pull the alarm, the bear attacked him. She swatted him back and forth in her paws like a rag doll, blood flying from his body as her claws punctured his skin. Once again, she discarded the boy to move to another to attack, leaving Noah gasping for breath as he felt his lungs slowly deflate. She spotted Victor a little further away, who had been watching the carnage take place, his feet rooted in the ground in fear, unable to do anything but watch. She charged at him next, and his life flashed before his eyes. She grabbed his leg in her jaw and bit down hard, almost severing his entire limb. He screamed out in pain, and surprisingly, she immediately let go, rushing out into the forest and finally out of sight. The boys watched as she and her cub disappeared into the leaves and prayed she would not come back. They were already lucky enough to be alive as they knew that she would definitely finish the job if she returned. Luckily for them, she had left the scene and would not return again. The entire ordeal had taken less than five minutes but had left half the group fighting for their lives. The uninjured boys ran to the aid of their friends as the rain quickly began to pour and beat down on them, washing their blood into the creek. They activated their personal locator beacons to call out to anyone in the area to help them and attempted to set up camp around the dying boys to protect them from the rain. At 9.30 p.m., the Rescue Coordination Center called troopers to report the signal and they were soon sent to rescue the teenagers at 3 a.m. While they were waiting, the boys tried to keep their friends conscious. Samuel Boas had graduated from the Westport Emergency Medical Services EMT program just a month previous and had already completed 100 hours of emergency medical training. He was able to use his skills under extreme pressure and with limited resources, saving their lives. They used plastic bags to close the wounds as best they could and bandaged it with gauze. They were all exhausted and traumatized and just trying to survive until help could arrive. Working together with the other boys, he was able to keep them alive until 3 a.m. when the emergency services were finally able to find their tent and fly them to safety. After assessing their damages, the team decided to separate them depending on their injuries, and as Joshua Berg and Samuel Gott Sagan were without a doubt the worst injured of the group, they were immediately flown to Providence Alaska Medical Center in Anchorage and admitted into intensive care where doctors attempted to save their lives. The other boys were flown to Matsu Medical Center to treat their minor injuries and were released to their families soon after. A secondary crew was sent back to the area to retrieve the remaining teenagers from the area even though they were not even aware of the attack or that there was a mother bear hunting in the area. They continued their search to find the bear, but they were ultimately unsuccessful, leaving the bear to roam and raise her cub as she had intended. Since the attack, the boys have come forward to explain their experience and warn others to be careful. There was ultimately nothing that they could have done to prevent the attack, and as it was all happening in a matter of minutes, quick thinking was not necessarily possible with such an intense time limit. They state that they will forever carry the physical and mental scars from that day and underwent intensive therapy to help them recover from their ordeal. 
The sounds of the broken bones and the screaming of their friends will never be unheard, but they are working towards their own recoveries. Luckily, Joshua Berg and Samuel Gottsagen were able to survive the attack without any permanent injury, but their recoveries were long and hard as they underwent multiple life-saving surgeries. NOLS have also spoken about the event, praising the boys for the survival skills and have stated that even if an adult leader was present, the outcome would likely have remained the same, meaning that the boys ultimately did everything that they could in the moment. They remain positive about their experience and are thankful to have narrowly escaped their terrifying final affliction.